So to me, Burning Man's a little complicated. Uh, it obviously changed the way I think about the world, reevaluate what, uh, what parts of my life I like and what parts of my life I don't like. A seemingly endless caravan is going five miles per hour through a salt desert in Nevada. 65,000 so-called burners are going to celebrate the biggest party on Earth. They call the desert Playa and the small town, which is built only for a week, Black Rock City. A social experiment is taking place on the Burning Man grounds. There is no money, only gifting and receiving gifts. Numerous large and small works of art and events make Burning Man the world's biggest art and culture festival. Not only are all visitors welcomed by a wide horizon, there's also a friendly ritual. And yes, there will be a hug for everybody. Those who come for the first time have to go down and get dirty and ring the bell. Of course, our director, sound guy and cameraman had to join the ritual. Groups of friends organize themselves into camps. Camps join together and build villages. There are great positions and also the less desirable ones. The first address is the street directly in front of the playa, the Esplanade. Here, we meet Burning Man veteran and free thinker Sean Cusack. All right, we're at Illumination Village. This is where I camp at Burning Man. Uh, it's one of the oldest villages in Black Rock City. Uh, it's also home to some of the more unique artists, in my opinion. Uh, I enjoy living here because it's a bunch of crazy people just like myself. Um, so it's a really good group of people to get to know, exchange ideas, that kind of thing. Uh, in addition to having the projects that we place out in the desert, uh, there's also a whole lot just within the village itself. So as this place gets darker, uh, everything lights up with fire. We've got LEDs everywhere. Uh, there's fire artists, there's LED artists, there's people with experimental fuels. You name it. Uh, people have probably tried it here. So uh, this is the piece that Mark Switzer actually runs. So um, this wait is. Wait a second! Wait a second! This is not true. This is a collaboration. <laughs> I could not have done this without Sean. Uh, of course. <laughs> What's Jesus. amazing? He's brilliant. My good looks. This is one of yeah. This good is good luck. Ladies, it's good. Nice nipples too. That's right. Yeah. You know, overall attractiveness. Exactly. We just your drinking capabilities. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, something like that. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> She's really fucking hot. You want you want us to burn it for you? The spiritual center of Burning Man is the temple, a place to take leave and leave bad times behind. David Best had the idea for the temple. The charismatic artist is considered the soul of Burning Man. Together with his crew, he built the huge temple. It all began 14 years ago for a sad reason and touches 10,000s of burners today during the festival. Yeah, you can pull that off. Yeah, you nice dinner jacket and some maids in it. Well, maybe 14 years ago, a young kid was killed on a motorcycle. And I was like his, kind of like a father, a role model. And he left the shop one night. We were getting ready to come to Burning Man, and he left the shop and was killed on his motorcycle. At the grave, his friends said, you know, Michael would have wanted to go to, wanted us to go to the desert. These kids had never had death before, right? They were young. And as we were building, it became a tribute to their friend.
The way the temple crew has teamed up says a lot about the spirit here at Burning Man. I have a young man who was arrested for felony manslaughter. And he's on the crew. He had to come on the crew to be forgiven. I have a man whose daughter committed suicide who's on the crew. I have a woman whose aunt and uncle were killed in a car crash in France two weeks ago. I have uh, a multimillionaire. I have a person that's homeless. So we have every possible walk of life on our crew. that 10,000 people put names in the center of the temple to people that they had lost. It's sad, but it's also healing, and healing is <laughs> pretty neat and cheerful. Here, we use fire to protect those painful times in your life that you want to be forgiven for or you want to forgive someone for. And it won't come back. If you say, I want to forgive my father, then you've made that deal. And we put it in there and we burn it and it's secure. And it'll only come back if you bring it back. We use fire here as a healing. I burn everything I've made for the last 14 years. We want to build a hospital in the Congo that's going to be permanent. So what we're going to do is use the same sacred approach to building that we have here. And we're going to make a hospital that the most evil person can be healed in. So yeah, that'll be our first, that'll be, we won't burn that. That'll be our first permanent thing that we do as a team. Thank you so much for your courtesy, huh? Thank you. See you. The playa wakes up at night. Thousands of burners dance beside the slow-moving art cars or in clubs resembling islands in the desert. The party goes on into the next morning and there is always something burning.
fire's like a, it's primal, right? I mean, like, the, who can control fire? Uh, I think, I think a lot of people get into fire art because it's, I mean, it's mystical. It's, I mean, there's, it's very visceral. You're in front of it. It's hot. It's, it's dangerous, but it's also used for warmth, right? So people, people want to get close to it. And I mean, you see this in a lot of pieces out here. People get closer and closer and closer. And then a lot of fire artists put in these effects where you get like big explosions of propane, like watching people jump back from them, like, and kind of afraid when they get close again. It's just, it's crazy. Um, and being able to bring that to people is a lot of fun. Uh, so I just really got into it. After a week of dust and dancing, the end is near. The Colossus is burning. It takes three hours to burn the man, the burning man.